So good morning to everyone and uh, welcome to the second day of our uh, Pegaso International Conference. We are starting with the project dissemination session and networking opportunities. So the aim of this session is to present some um, international projects um, that are conducted by institutions that are somehow involved in this uh, this uh, conference here you can see uh, my name so my name i'm valeri dermol coming from international school for social and business studies and with us are uh, michele colletto and roberta aloca from pegaso online university uh, matisse altman uh, is with us uh, in his mind because he recorded a video and I will show a video about a project that are um, coordinated actually by Technical University of Dresden. Uh, I think that Anka Dergici is also here from University of Temishwara and Florian. Uh, I think that Florian uh, Link Leonard is also here from Technical University of Dresden. He is also going to present a project conducted by coordinated by Technical University of Dresden. Uh, so I think that uh, there is quite a, a clear uh, it's a connection between uh, project projects, international projects, on, in our case, more or less Erasmus plus projects and networking. So by my experience at our institution, at the moment we are involved in, so altogether 16, 16 uh, Erasmus plus projects, which is quite a lot for institution I'm coming from, which is a rather small, small uh, higher education institution. But how we succeed in this, uh, so to, to achieve such a huge number of projects by networking. So we are, let's say, we are, we are uh, doing this intentionally all the time. So we are start, uh, trying to connect international conferences uh, that we are involved in or we, or we, we organize them uh, with our uh, publishing houses, we have two publishing houses, and uh, we are also in, let's say, involving people from, from international projects that we are involved in in our conferences and vice versa. So this way we are trying to, to, to build up a uh, network that somehow is a huge potential for our also future success. So maybe not to, to, to bother you with uh, all details behind our networking uh, activities, I would like now to maybe to uh, invite Michele, Michele to present. Okay, thanks, uh, thanks a lot, uh, Valerie, for your kind invitation uh, to speak in this very important international conference um, and to give our university, uh, the University of Pegaso online in Italy, to give our the, the opportunity to present uh, Horizon 2020 Silvanus project. Uh, and thanks also to um, Professor Nada Trank and Professor Melillo that they are the scientific coordinators of these important international events. So uh, Silvanus is uh, uh, the Horizon 2020 project is, uh, a, um, is, a, is the mission of Silvanus is to create an integrated technological and information platform wildfire uh, management. And uh, as you know, uh, all the summer, uh, the intensity and the severity of wildfires increase exponentially, creating incalculable uh, damage to biodiversity uh, worldwide. From Northern Europe to Southern Europe, particularly in Italy, Portugal, and, or in Greece, uh, and also in South America and to Australia. The cases are various uh, and not uh, only traceable uh, for um, like the, the guilty hand of man, the high summer also temperatures due to climate change 
and global warming and the consequent desertification. The flame of large fires have broken out in, in Italy and uh, around the, the world, destroying thousands of hectares of forest uh, heritage and with it also parks and nature's reserves and biodiversity that surrounded them. All told, there is uh, a growing amount of spatial data on the wildfires from variety um, of sources um, and often collected on, at national, regional and global levels. There is currently no international initiative and activity to um, harmonize and uh, um, amalgamate this information and distribute it to users around the world. Research on, on, on the spread of forest fires indicates the need for a global strategy to combat the growing impacts of, of forest fires that extend beyond regional effects to global climate change. In order to mitigate um, its impacts on the ecosystem that every, um, very often these impacts uh, can be greater than the total are barnet. Determining the length of time it takes for a burned area to recover. So, uh, Silvanus is envisaged uh, to develop a platform for an environmentally uh, sustainable and climate resilient forest management in consultation with the stakeholders. Uh, this is our ID cards, uh, is uh, funded by Innovation Action of European uh, 2020. Uh, the project cost is uh, 24 million of euro. Uh, of, uh, and uh, the partners of the project are 29 uh, from international partners and European countries. Um, then the vision of Silvanus is the development of a climate resilient and innovative technological platform providing decision making support in preparedness, response, and recovery phases of wildfire management cycle and increasing the human, environmental, and economic resilience to wildfires. The mission is uh, our mission is to adopt synergistic alliance between technology and scientific innovation, environmental, and human factors. The project can be divided or course or built in three phases. The phase A regarding the prevention and preparedness, the phase B regarding the detection and response to collect data collection, and phase C, forest restoration policies. Um, our characteristic of Sylvanus, um, as you, you can see um, on, in this, in this uh, slide, um, our characteristic of Sylvanus Consortium is the large number of stakeholders involved in, in the project. Uh, I repeat, from uh, 15 European member states and three international countries. Um, and then you can see also uh, the uh, the objective of, of, of our three phases. The phases are prevention and preparedness uh, have the objective and the user producer to forest landscape management tools, historical assessment of wildfire causes, effects and climate impacts, the impact assessment framework, then semantic created semantic modeling and knowledge representation and uh, uh, training of firefighters and, and uh, create a framework of citizen engagement with citizen science. Um, in fact, the, the second innovation of Silvanus project is to envelop envelopment of all interested parties, stakeholders, including environmental scientists, forest conservancies, regional councils, fire departments, um, and uh, uh, the project will develop a citizen shared science program, including uh, technology, utilities, forestry, administrative authorities, and local communities. 
Knowledge developed in the project will be used to improve firefighting preparedness, response coordination, and rehabilitation activities. For this reason, the stakeholders' representation will include an expert in biodiversity, ecological resilience studies, forest governance, public administration authorities, regional uh, authorities, in, especially in Italy, uh, Sardinia region and the Apulia region. Then uh, we also include forest management service providers, software and technology providers, uh, especially in, say, in phase B, in the detection and response uh, with collective big data service for real-time monitoring of fire spread and decision support system. Um, of course, uh, all the, the skills of our stakeholders will be integrated with environmental uh, crisis management, uh, the coordination of, of forest fire response, the deployment of frontline resources in fire suppression, health professional in monitoring the physical status of firefighters. Uh, the phase uh, A of the preparation and preparedness uh, studies and assessment of changes in biodiversity or the state of biodiversity will be assessed knowledge gathered about the geographical context and ecological analysis models. The Silvanus project the Sabanus project will undertake uh, further investigation to develop a biodiversity index considering the historical context of the geographic region. This is the, our PRAM framework uh, that can, uh, where, where, where you can see all the stakeholders involved in this international project. Then this is or of the early stage results for each phases to create also a special app to identify the, 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 the plants and, uh, and to connect directly to firefighters to, uh, for the signal of the, some uh, firefighters in forest. Uh, of course, the technology uh, can help our work to monitoring the, the forest system all over the world. Then uh, we have also uh, to collect all biodiversity index for each our pilot area demonstration that we have in our project. In fact, we have different pilots area demonstration in Europe, in French, in Italy, in the Gargano region and in uh, Sardinia, in Slovakia with public awareness on fire danger safety, in Greece, in Romania, in Portugal, in Czech Republic and in final in Croatia. Croatia. Then we have also three important uh, international pilot demonstration areas, in one in Indonesia, one in Brazil, and the last one in Australia, with uh, effectively, effectively combating against wildfire using uh, UGV and advanced computer technologies. This is, uh, uh, of course, the, 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 a very short presentation and overview of our uh, project. And if you want to uh, have more information of our project, you can visit our website page, sylvanusproject.eu, or uh, please uh, contact also our social media in LinkedIn and Twitter. And, uh, and to, to, to have a update of, uh, of, the, of the several steps of our project. 
Thanks a lot for your attention, Valerie, and all participants. I'm saying I'm Roberta Locca from Pegas Online University. I'm a PhD student, but also a project manager of the Euro Mediterranean Center for Lifelong Learning, uh, directed by Professor Merillo, director of Pegas International. And today I want to share with you the, the results and the, the, the work of our project RespectNet, as full community through media education network. This is an Erasmus Plus project. These are our partners in the project. We are a project coordinator at Pegasus Online University, but we are collaborating with other partners, in particular SOE before, uh, from uh, Germany, International School of Social and Business Studies from Slovenia, and the Polytechnica University of uh, Timisoara from Romania. Uh, RespectNet is, uh, as I was saying, an Erasmus Plus project regarding the, the issue of uh, proper media and social communication. Uh, this but is. Rebecca, a, yeah. sorry, I think that uh, you have to switch the sh shared screen because it does not go uh, on. So we are oh. still okay. looking at the first slide. Okay, now? Yeah, that's okay. No, okay. No. Uh, so um, this is an Erasmus Plus project regarding the, the issue of uh, proper media and social communication. I think this is a very, very actual uh, theme because uh, um, uh, if we think about uh, our young, uh, um, young guys, uh, in, the period of, in the period of COVID, they, um, uh, they started to use uh, media as the only window on the world because these, uh, these, uh, these two years uh, um, were very hard for everyone, in particular for them. So um, phenomena like uh, um, cyberbullying uh, were increased. Uh, so facing COVID pandemic, social inequality and societal incoherence have clearly increased and become more, more visible, uh, especially through negative communication, uh, problems like fake news, misinformation and cyberbullying. So um, these uh, social trends are also being felt in universities. There is a risk that um, every, uh, even among university members, awareness uh, of careful and respectful uh, uh, communication will be afflicted by these new, um, new trends. And so um, the project addresses to the topic of um, democracy and inclusive democratic participation, media literacy and talking with information, and um, in particular about the prevention of bullying to, uh, in order to um, contribute to the uh, horizontal priorities, uh, in order to share common values of civic and respectful uh, communication. This will be done by contributing uh, to digital readiness, resilience and capacity uh, of university members. And uh, the project um, considers aspects uh, of multidimensional diversity in, uh, in all its activities. And, um, eco-friendliness in the execution of all the, the objectives. Uh, there are in particular three objectives uh, um, that this project wants to, 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 to reach. Uh, a development of the media literacy of university staff and students to foster a culture of respectful science di scientific dialogue, increasing the exchange of experience, of good experiences, best practices um, with the way the regional civic society to build uh, a knowledge partnership between universities and civil society. Uh, in the common objective of respectful communication and develop a code of um, respectful dialogue um, in the university, but also in general in civil society. And uh, um, we have three, um, three particular, uh, we, we call them to do about this, uh, this project. One is the, the development of the matrix of media and respectful communication competencies for university staff. Uh, develop uh, multimedia modules on media competencies and respectful communication and transmedia learning a transmedia learning platform on media communication competencies for university members. About the first result, the result takes up the challenge of uh, uh, digitalized communication, which is disrupting traditional communication styles. 
these magics will define a list of hard uh, and soft skills that define uh, a respectful and constructive communication among university members and civil society. And this uh, could be a tool with the, that um, could help universities to reflect on negative communication styles and find um, competencies that need to be improved. The result will be highly innovative and can be used by a wide audience um, within university and civil society organization to review and assess sound competencies and to define programs of further training. About the second step, multimedia models on media competencies and respectful communication, we have to say that pandemic has had a positive impact on uh, communication since it has strengthened uh, the already constituted uh, modes of uh, online communication by innovating them also in the universities because um, the, the didactic online has become uh, the, 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 principal, uh, the principal mode about lessons uh, in all grades of school, from school to to, to university. So the function of multimedia modules on media competencies and respectful uh, um, communication will be especially to underline the fundamental rule covered by uh, ethical respect of common values within any kind of communication. A communication linked to lessons, so linked to knowledge, but also a simply fun communication among friends. About the third, uh, the third point, uh, after a transnational meeting held by Pegasus Online University in Naples uh, last May, um, our partners are focusing on the implementation of a transmedia learning platform. We are structuring some, uh, uh, um, some uh, um, tools uh, uh, to create this, uh, this objective, uh, for example, lectures, um, video materials, handouts, uh, and uh, overview presentations. So uh, the next step will be um, a phase of learning activities consisting in the presentation of uh, uh, a draft of the lessons uh, and so uh, of the content uh, of the multimedia materials which will uh, take place in Piran next uh, in Piran next uh, November so see you in 2023 for any other updates thank you uh, Roberta thank you very much for your presentation so this project is about communication. It's about respectful communication and also about digitalization of higher education and cooperation of higher education with, let's say, wider environment with businesses, with the uh, uh, social social environment, and so on. So and within this project, uh, quite some some materials will be developed, online materials. Uh, so. Uh, 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 online platform, e-classrooms with some readings, with some videos and so on. And this is the area uh, where the next project is somehow focused on. So the next project is about open educational resources, about higher education and about collaborative online learning. So it's, uh, and Florian, uh, you're welcome to to give us your, your uh, presentation about this very interesting project. Thank you for the kind introduction and also good morning from Germany. Uh, yes, our project which started in March is called OER Codex, Open Educational Resources for Collaborative Online and Distance Education and Exchange. What do I want to present today? Um, just a quick overview, um, we don't have a, a lot of time, I want to talk about what is our initial problem situation, how we want to solve this problem and how are we going to get there and of course what the impact of this project is. Again, my name is Florian and I'm very happy to be here. Our problem is um, Beforehand, before COVID, um, we also had the problem that e-learning and blended learning courses are not really were not really welcome in the in the higher education uh, systems, and educators were well either not willing or willing um, to enhance physical courses with online learning content. Um, but at the latest point with COVID, um, we were 
we were confronted with the the large task to uh, switch from physical to online learning to form some kind of blended learning arrangement and then we noticed okay we have problems um, in this field we have either a lack of expertise for the educators they don't know where to start they don't they don't know what to do at all the technological skills is another challenge um, for educators to start with online learning and of course nobody has to reinvent the wheel um, we have to look for content that is already available and accessible to actually start with for example online learning courses therefore educators um, are facing individual challenges on on these three levels and also on several others and these cannot be tackled by each educator alone but should be tackled on an organizational level so our current challenge is that we have to somehow find a way to provide educators with online and blended learning content in a systemized and widely accessible manner. And this is where open educational resources come into play. They have been around for quite some time, uh, but somehow they haven't really arrived yet. And uh, at the normal, the normal higher education programs, and we want to change that. Um, but we don't want to do only open educational resources. We have to, you have to deepen the understanding with these courses. And one way to enhance the open educational resources is with co collaborative online learning. Um, collaborative online learning is an online task in which different participants of the course come together and they solve some kind of task. Um, it can be anything really. So it, the online collaborative learning is actually adaptable to any kind of task where collaboration is needed. So it can be done in, in, um, in business courses. It can be done, for example, in architecture courses. So there's a wide range where you can actually apply collaborative online courses and learning. And we want to provide educators with OER online courses which show the educator how to create OER online courses. So it's a little meta, um, meta perspective. And each course shall have a collaborative task which where the educators come together and they solve some kind of task and create OER content themselves inside the course, which then is again added to the OER database along with our OER online courses. But taking a step back, um, who are we? We are project partners, five project partners from EMUNI, um, VDU in Kaunas, Lithuania, FH Krems in Austria, and TU Dresden. And it was very important for us that we are, as you might have seen already in my project description, it is a very interdisciplinary task and and uh, challenge so we have we had the the success of creating an interdisciplinary team which reaches from the expertise of how to produce oer and how teaching with oer actually um, is done we have the expertise of collaborative online learning how you can actually facilitate collaborative online learning but we also have how how do we have to manage these courses in higher education. And last but not least, we also have an expertise in virtual reality. So how can we actually also enhance OER online courses with virtual reality? So you can see there's, there's a lot of expertise flying around which we want to integrate into one whole. What do we really want to do? in this project. We have six project results over the next um, two and a half years now. And um, the first we started to actually think about together, okay, we need some kind of handbook, how to create online courses um, with OER and of course with online collaborative learning. So we created um, a so-called methodology or you can also say a handbook for educators um, 
where you can where we have a step by step step introduction on how to what to look out for when you want to create OER courses and how can you integrate online collaborative learning in these online courses. This was our first project result and we um, we have completed that project result and we're now starting to um, to develop our four clusters. These classes um, contain lessons, so courses in themselves, and these are have the following topics: digital resources in online collaborative learning. So in this cluster, you learn about how what kind of digital resources can you actually use for OER in co online collaborative learning. Then cluster two is how you can actually guide and facilitate online collaborative learning, and how, for example, learning analytics and conversational agent technology can help in these endeavors. Then you also have the problem when you want to when you want to do such an online course with students, you have to somehow, of course, assess what they're doing um, and also in online collaborative learning. So again, you can use online, um, you can use learning analytics to support that. And the last, cl last cluster is um, gamification and virtual reality environments. And there we want to also introduce how um, how educators can use gamification and virtual reality for online collaborative learning to enhance the students' learning um, learning experience in these online courses. In these courses, we also have to try it out. So we want to have a piloting phase where we actually just want to try out how these lessons and courses will work in um, yeah, in real life. To give you a little overview, um, so we uh, we have these four clusters, as you can see here, which I described, and each cluster contains um, two or three courses, which have individual lessons. So you have small packages of OER content, which you which the educator can can dive into and learn, and then we have an OER repository. So this is the collection of all these online courses and the content that is created within the courses. So when the educators get together and do a lesson, they have a collaborative task in which, for example, they create some kind of output, some kind of media, and this media shall be OER again and put into the OER repository so others can reuse um, these OER. How can the educator actually profit from our methodology and our courses? Well, it is a it shall be a very smooth and and um, helpful introduction to the whole concept of OER online courses. It is also a complete overview of how can you integrate online collaborative learning in your online courses, so educators can learn and collaborate and discuss with other educators to deepen their understanding. In these courses, an educator will learn how to design their own collaborative course for their students based on what they have learned in our courses. And of course, in, um, for the future and for the sustainability, we want to create um, a kind of iterative process to evaluate these courses and add your lessons learned and actually improve this OER repository over the, yeah, the time we have. That was already it, just a quick overview. And if you have uh, questions, please ask me. And um, of course, we have a project website. And if you would like some more information also, please visit that. Thank you very much. Uh, Florian, Florian, thank, thank you very, very, very much for a very interesting uh, presentation. And I think it's a very good starting point for um, Anka Dragici from uh, Timisoara uh, Polytechnica University, uh, because uh, she is going to present a MAST project. And this MAST project is, is about competencies. Teachers, higher education teachers should have to be able to conduct virtual, on, on, virtual online learning, digital learning, so online learning actually. So Anka, 
Hello, Hello, everybody. I just want to uh, get ready quickly because uh, um, and to congratulate all the previous speakers because I learn a lot. Once again, it's about learning, teaching and everything else associated with this uh, nice community of learners and teachers. I will uh, leave you some space to have some, um, how it's called, uh, self-study or uh, self-development through our, uh, our already um, achievements. The idea of uh, MAST project, because this is uh, the topic, uh, has arise uh, during the pandemic. I, I have uh, worked to build up this project uh, on, in March 2020, when we just uh, have been confronted with the first wave or zero wave, I don't know. Uh, this is a challenge. And then uh, we have another background challenge because uh, most of the teachers and trainers in the university community belongs to the baby boomers. And we are still working, thank you very much. And uh, together with the other, uh, um, uh, together with other type of generation, but our students belong to uh, millennials generation, and they see the world totally different. So this was a second challenge. And um, what's happening, in fact, in the last two years, it's something like this. I hope you enjoy my picture, uh, and it's a metamorphosis. Uh, how we transform ourselves from some bug or unpleasant uh, view you see down here in a beautiful butterfly with the, your projects supported by the projects and also by our project, the MAST project. So it has been um, identified, we, uh, we have identified uh, some uh, uh, big challenges from the new reality and believe me or not, I'm coming from an engineering, uh, from polytechnic school, uh, university, and it was a very a double challenge because laboratories engineers has to be confronted with the reality, and we have to build a new reality somehow. And uh, we have made, uh, we have developed also uh, competencies. Uh, um, uh, um, a study about which competencies or skills are needed and we need to fulfill some gaps. So this is the point where we started to build up uh, the project with these challenges. And these are the partners which uh, have been uh, uh, decide and uh, have been uh, involved in the, the preliminary stage of how when we build the, the project and then the implementation phase, because I consider already our project mature. Mature, we have already passed through the middle of the interim report and this year, and now we are in the phase of uh, ex uh, our experiences in training in uh, uh, assure that what we have imagined together uh, has been uh, uh, a validation of from the trainees. So um, uh, already the presenter has uh, have been. Um, uh, I have seen other partners involved in different other projects, but here is a very important uh, consortium, a bigger one, with various type of uh, expertise. And uh, to see what we have developed, this is a self uh, study that I invited you at. Uh, you know that all the resources that have been developed should be open resources. So I would like you to enjoy our face, our um, web page. I would like you to go on Facebook and see some uh, interesting articles related to multi to multimedia uh, development, multimedia skills development. And uh, I would like you to enjoy and to give likes to the, uh, to the articles that we published there and also to the YouTube channel of ours. If this is a new um, and uh, has been populated with interesting lessons and also uh, multimedia experiences. So um, this is what we have provided till now and it's still ongoing because 
uh, based on the valorization of the framework of the European framework of competencies, Educom, Digicom, we, can, we have uh, provided uh, a well-structured uh, uh, training program, uh, which consists of four theoretical units and one applicative unit. And here it's a mind map of the, the, with all the details. I know it's not visible, but all the training materials are on the web page. Uh, so please use it and uh, mention or get in contact with our uh, university, with the people, with the DG coaches, because uh, this is a schema of the training, which we have uh, now decided to, we are in the phase of implementation. So it's about a self-assessment test online done uh, via the e-learning platform. When you get feedback and you understand which are your gap as learner, uh, as trainee, and then in our case, in the Politecnica case, we have developed the Romanian uh, uh, virtual campus uh, dedicated to MAST project. And we have a, a very nice group of DG coaches supported more than 20, 200 learners already um, enrolled in the campus. We are now in the process of, uh, of enroll some uh, people, university staff, so not only teachers and researchers from uh, uh, this uh, academic staff, uh, uh, we add, we pay attention to those people from the administrative and technical support of our activities. Finally, we, you can get recognition, you can get some uh, based on your um, uh, evaluation or what we would like very much to have some projects from the lear uh, learners. We have uh, developed a series of events uh, online and face-to-face. -face. Uh, all partners of the project have been dedicated to this uh, dissemination phase because now we have something to say. And thank you very much for your attention. Uh, and if you want uh, other um, uh, info about this one, I can uh, provide you uh, via email or uh, check the other partners' emails on the web page. So this is all from my side. And uh, I would like you to visit uh, the, the YouTube channel, the, uh, the Facebook uh, and also uh, the Facebook page and also the web page of the project. Thank you very much. Anka, Anka, thank you. Thank you very much also to you for a really nice, uh, uh, effective presentation, I would say. I'm, I, I would like to finish with, uh, uh, with the idea which I started with. Uh, so with the idea of networking, with the idea of uh, internationalization, involvement in international projects. Here you can see um, the projects that we have already concluded at International School for Social and Business Studies. You can see there is a huge number of uh, those projects. And here are the projects that we uh, are involved in at this moment. Uh, so among them, you can see MUST Multimedia Skills University Staff Project uh, and, and some, some other projects, RespectNet also. Uh, so this is actually this is the result of of our networking uh, efforts. I will just start uh, playing uh, one video. So video that was recorded by uh, by Matisse Altman, and it's a video about uh, project Valeux. Uh, it's a project that we are also involved in. Uh, it's about virtual online learning. Hello and good morning here at the PICCONF conference on October 22nd. I'm happy to be here at the dissemination and networking session for international projects. And uh, my name is Mattis Altman. I'm coming from the Technical University of Dresden and want to present the ValueX project and beyond. And at first, let's have a short look here at the ValueX project. So it's an Erasmus Plus program in uh, capacity building in higher education. It's a joint project in Albania with the 
original duration of 24 months uh, until uh, the 14th of January 2022. But due to COVID, we got one year extension until January 2023, which is next year. Here you can see a picture of our consortium in the uh, Corona the COVID uh, winter 2020 to 2021. And you can find us online on www.value-x.eu. But let's have a short look at the consortium. So we have six Albanian partner universities here, UIT, Epoca, Unico, UAMD, University of Škodra and University of Elbasan, complemented by three EU partners, the ISSPS from Slovenia, Unimed from Italia and TU Dresden from Germany. And here you can see a picture from uh, 2020 in uh, February. This was shortly before the COVID came, uh, where our project had the kickoff meeting. Now, let's have a short look. What is ValueX about? Um, ValueX is about implementing virtual mobility and virtual collaborative learning. What is virtual collaborative learning? It's virtual, so online using new communication channels. It's collaborative, so working in groups and benefiting from the experience of other. And it's about learning, so gaining new knowledge and experience. And here you can see the experience of the uh, TU Dresden uh, chair here of uh, the international VCLs held during the years. And uh, as you can see on the right side uh, here, uh, we had a yeah the third um, VCL complemented by Albanian observers or Albanian students. And let's have a shorter look about the VCL and dive a little bit deeper here. So we have four main design dimensions, um, which, uh, yeah, uh, to ensure the quality in our virtual collaborative learning settings. This is a professionalized pedagogical support. These are realistic cases and working tasks, a technical platform and learning analytics. You can uh, get more information when you get in touch, but I will keep it short here for the presentation. So shortly about the key achievements in 2020, we had expert forums with 170 participants, five events in two days in the Erasmus days, and also four of the six Valley X labs already completed. And we have written our needs assessment report here um, about a virtual collaborative teaching and learning in Albania. Um, you can see here the outcome, for example, 81% had no experience with international staff mobility, 19% in 2020 is capable of teaching online courses to foreign students and 65% said they are not ready for a digital transition. So these are the key outcomes of this report. Then uh, we had an e-tutor qualification workshop. So remember the professionalized pedagogical support here is uh, delivered by qualified e-tutors. Um, you can see here the schedule of the e-tutor qualification in the, in the end. 36 students attended and were qualified as e-tutors to be ready for the so-called pilot VCLs in virtual collaborative learning. Those uh, pilot VCLs were launched on a local level in 2021, so it was the winter semester from 2021 to 2022, and we had uh, in total over um, nine VCL modules with over 100 student participants. These modules took place locally at each university and they were very diverse. We had a language translation, image processing, teaching technology and business communication, but also the basics of botany and psychology of language, the introduction to business advanced financial analysis and reporting, as well as a stock exchange simulation. This was a great success. And um, in 2022, we launched an international virtual collaborative learning module consisting of eight partners uh, with over 100 students in one module. And you can see here our uh, yeah, fictive cover story. So remember the realistic case design. Here it was a pitch contest to create an ecotourism 
uh, startup in Albania. And here you can see also the winning team of uh, the students coming from uh, Germany, Albania and uh, Slovenia. And this is so far the actual status of the project. We are almost finished, but uh, let's see what's up next in the project. And this might be also interesting for you. It's the virtual Balkans conference at Epoca University in Tirana. And this conference is to be held on November 30th, 2022. And you can still hand, and hand in or submit your abstracts to this conference until November 1st. When you check the QR code here with your cell phone, um, or just uh, go to www.value-x.eu, um, then you can find more information about the conference. And the following topics will be covered through the thematic sessions. It's about innovative virtual teaching and learning settings for academic staff at Albanian higher education institutes, also ICT-based, so information and communication technology, internationalization at home, and the global network for virtual mobilities for the higher education institutes, as well as adopting and recognizing virtual and blended mobility as part of the higher education institutes internationalization strategy. This will be our last synchronous on-site activity. After that, we just have to finish the project reporting. But um, just to have an outlook, um, we have also acquired a new project which is called COVEP and is starting in 2023. It's about promoting and facilitating collaborative virtual international learning in the Western Balkans higher education institutions. And this project aims to build capacities in the Western Balkans higher education institutions for international virtual collaborative learning. Also, we'll focus on co-creating virtual blended learning spaces and course content that will boost 21st century skills and competencies for students. And it will also address the low cross-border collaboration among higher education institutes and students in the Western Balkan region, because the partners are not from Albania only in this time, but from the whole Western Balkan region, from Albania, from Montenegro, from Bosnia and Herzegovina, from Kosovo, Italy and Germany. And uh, to say it in easy words, the target is to continue the success story of Value X within the Western Balkan region. So we will roll out and we are happy that uh, with the lead partner uh, Epoca in the new uh, project, uh, we will continue our success story. This is uh, so far about the Value X project. You can find us on the web on www.value-x.eu. You can also check us on LinkedIn uh, or write us an email at info at value-x.eu or just get in contact. I just have to say thank you and be ready for the next virtual mobility experience. the first project that we'd like to present it's the project that started let's say a few months ago it's a university business community partnership to promote digital learning among disadvantages groups of learners this is the project um, where we try to to target the disadvantages group like let's say elderly people um, different ethnic or minorities for example in slovenia the the, um, the Roma the Roma population and we would like to to see how we can approach this population with the new digital new digital let's say tools and the main the main focus is on the uh, social care uh, social care workers because um, we assume that more or less this population it is working with these um, with these uh, people. Uh, Valerie will share now the the slide uh, of this project, not the respect net, the this one. Un in leco, un in leco. And um, in, as you see from the from the logos of the partners, we have here uh, two institutions from um, Spain, because Spain is also the coordinator. 
and the applicant country. It's the University of Alicante. It's the foundation from Alicante who works with very closely with the university. We have from Macedonia, uh, South um, um, European Southeast uh, University from um, Tetovo. We have the um, Social and Business uh, International School for Social and Business Studies from Slovenia. And we have one NGO from uh, Germany, uh, ESOP. Normally, the, the K2 project has quite a similar structure, all of them. At the beginning, we have to do some, let's say, um, not the basic analysis, but somehow the upgrade of the analysis in the area. We have to collect uh, some of the best practices in the area. And then we make a common understanding uh, among the partners, because this is very important if you, would, if you want to proceed with the project. And when we make this common understanding about the topic, we can uh, we are developing the contents and the contents are usually serving either for the self learning or we can we are producing also the the e uh, e learning uh, courses and here valeria and his team are the experts in this uh, let's say uh, learning management uh, systems and so the idea of this project is that there should be kind of a collaboration between universities and uh, let's say uh, social um, co communities and, and uh, especially disadvantaged groups from this uh, let's say from, 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 from this social environment and uh, due to due to so during the COVID period uh, it, it was somehow evident that uh, there is a problem of uh, poor knowledge of uh, di uh, digital digital tools, so quite quite poor digital literacy on the side of of disadvantaged groups, uh, and not, but not just disadvantaged groups, but also social workers, teachers, and other other people who are somehow dealing with uh, with disadvantaged groups uh, marginal groups uh, migrants roma population and, and similar so and the idea uh, of this project is to somehow equip these people so social workers and teachers uh, and also disadvantaged groups so members of disadvantaged groups uh, to 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 so to give them some kind of knowledge skills to be able to use digital technology and this in this way enable collaboration communication between higher education and uh, those groups so this is the basic idea of, of of the project and of course the let's say the, the tool that we are going to develop is a course so the course that was will be somehow uh, uh, devoted to to uh, developing digital skills of social workers and similar similar profiles of um, of people. Valeri, thank you for let's say this um, added value of the project because really. It is um, that through this project, we are developing so-called the third dimension of the university, no? That university is not only to educate and to, to research, but also to involve, uh, to being involved in the society, no? This is the idea behind. Thank you, Valeri. Okay, we can, we can go now to project that is uh, coordinated by Bermol. Uh, consulting innovative teaching practice to raise awareness of microplastics as an environmental issue. And uh, I will give a word to Alenka. Okay, thank you. Um, hello, my name is Alenka Darmol, and uh, I'm going to present in short another project from uh, our network, which is about the microplastics. 
So in uh, this project, um, we are working together, like our company, uh, with the Faculty of Environmental Protection from Velenia, Slovenia, and uh, another uh, NGO from Italy, from Taranto. Uh, this is an Erasmus Plus project, so we all of three of us work together. Why did we go? Did we decide to to go into this project? Because we think that this microplastics is a very very severe problem, and uh, that people do not know a lot about uh, this problem. So it should be uh, we should raise or increase people's awareness and maybe find some interesting solutions about this problem. And we also want to create some teaching material for the high school teachers so that they could use these materials in their classrooms. Uh, the project activities in this project microplastics are basically five webinars. Actually, there are 10 webinars because there are five in Slovenia and five in Italy. And uh, we are also producing e-classrooms and uh, a competition, a video producing competition where uh, the students will uh, try to produce the best video uh, with the title World Without Microplastics. Um, our webinars were uh, in Slovenia already uh, finished. So the first one was about the uh, uh, the alphabet of microplastics, so from macroplastics to my, mm, microplastics. The second one was about microplastics in the household. So we were talking about cosmetics and stuff like that. The third one about urban environments. So we also have a lot of microplastics in the textile industry, uh, also in cars, tires, and uh, stuff like this. Then the fourth was about the problems of plastic waste. And the last one about the phase of microplastics in the environment and uh, the impact microplastics has on ecosystems. What have we done until now? In Slovenia, we have done the five webinars, dissemination events, and also one special workshop on video production to equip kind of the students with uh, additional knowledge how to produce short videos. In Italy, we have already had three webinars and two webinars are uh, going to be in uh, this month and next month. So we will also finish very uh, in, in some weeks. Um, we have produced many different materials. Uh, the first one, is our project website. And on this project website, we are trying to, to kind of gather all uh, the materials regarding the microplastics from Slovenia, from Italy. And uh, we are also uh, asking the teachers to add some of their materials. So basically this website is very material rich. Uh, we have posted all of the um, all of the webinars, all of the videos from all of our events, and uh, so that everybody who wants to uh, get any information about the microplastics can just go through these uh, materials on the website and basically have a look at everything we have done in this project. Uh, the second thing we have produced in this project is our YouTube channel. Um, we have a YouTube channel with a lot of videos and we have uh, divided or, uh, these videos into some playlists. So basically for, um, for each one of the webinars, we have a separate playlist. So uh, all of the videos from this event are kind of uh, gathered together in one playlist on our YouTube channel. Um, then another thing we have already produced, this is, this is a Slovenian e-classroom, basically five Slovenian e-classrooms. Uh, each classroom contains materials from the, from the webinars. 
and also additional materials like uh, links to interesting websites or maybe uh, additional materials from the students. We have also uh, a lot of students who have uh, contributed their materials, their project work to our um, webinars. So everything is also included in, in our classroom. Uh, another thing is an uh, English classroom. So on this uh, kind of learning portal, which is in English language, elearningproject.eu, we have also another project, and the, one of them is microplastics. We have here uh, the three, the first three classrooms, and this all of this material, which is on the Slovenian classroom. Uh, is also here on this one, but here everything is in English. And because the, the project is also in Italy, we have everything translated into Italian language. Um, the next, ne next steps uh, in this project, uh, we have just started our video competition for the best video about world without microplastics and uh, students will use their creativity their imagination and try to produce something interesting they always have great ideas so we are already looking forward to to all the materials they will produce uh, in the next three or four months um so these are the basically some things about our project about microplastics. And uh, if you have uh, any questions, I will be happy to ask. But thanks for listening. Alinka, thank you. Maybe we can invite uh, our uh, international partner from Italy, Augusto Sebastio, to share her ex his experience with the project. Yes, uh, absolutely. It's, it was a very, very interesting, uh, a very, very interesting occasion to work together in this new field. We involved uh, uh, one of the most important school of uh, of Taranto, of my town, which is the Istituto Battaglini. It's a very, very uh, important school. It's a scientific uh, lyceum in the following the Italian organizations of the school, and they they did a lot of projects. Uh, um, uh, every year, and uh, they were very, very pleased to participate to the the micro microplastic process uh, project because um, they involved uh, a lot of students. The participation was very, very high. They had uh, we had like uh, uh, one hundred eighty participants in one of our webinars, and in the last one that we had last week we had uh, more than 100 students so a lot of, a big number of classrooms are involved and what is uh, interesting is that they usually compare the situation uh, in general with our town which is a town on the sea and the problems of microplastic in our town is a high problem because we have uh, the, the big industry that produce also microplastic uh, microplastic uh, uh, we can say things and also because in our seas we have the dolphins nursery a natural decision of dolphins to be in our sea to live in our sea and it's a problem for the dolphins to live in uh, to have a normal life in a water full full of microplastic and we we share our experience with all the participants and uh, it was a very very involving connection in all the webinars with because of the high number of students participating in it. It was very, very interesting. And we are going to work again in the next two webinars. Thank you. Yes, it is really a very interesting project. And it's uh, very good, as Augusto said, that we are comparing the two, two kind of environments, the Italian and the Slovenian. And we have already found some uh, uh, common points, but also some difficulties uh, and some uh, things which are different in, in uh, both places. So it's very interesting. Yes. Yeah. Great project. We try to involve in the next uh, in the next uh, webinars uh, a group that works for in the on the seaside for uh, the micro against microplastic and the, the Ionian Dolphin Society, which works with dolphins in the water. So it's probably we will have this very interesting participation in our next webinars.
Excellent, excellent, a whistle, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, microplastic is really everywhere. I, I'm now aware also through this project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before we, it was some information on the TV. Okay, like a dust. Yes, yeah, that's one of the main now, goals now of this project. <laughs> yes, now we see microplastic everywhere. <laughs> yeah, raise awareness. That's the goal of the project. So now we all know that the plastic is not only plastic bottles, but also microplastic, which we cannot see. And that's a bigger problem than those plastic bottles. I think in the last webinar, it was very, very important for the students to see the, the, the textile part in the yeah. clothes. For them, it was a, an occasion to discover what is microplastic. Yeah. In, yeah. In this in, in this new area, because they didn't consider, they always think microplastic in the sea and nothing else yeah, more. Exactly. There is a lot. There are a lot. Yeah. Mm. Yes. Before this project, I saw just the big plastic, not the microplastic. Mm. Let's say the bottle, the sacks, and so on. When I when I walked on the on the seaside on the coast, I saw this plastic. No. Yeah. And it was the I didn't really thought about the microplastic let's say as a phenomenon that it's affecting really our lives no yeah what is very very important is how we can go to the circular economy how we can use again these stuffs to produce uh, for example energy or the other things this is very very important the circular economy in every field but in microplastic in specific is very very important because uh, we need to change our way of living not just in the normal life but if we, we can use stuffs or, uh, or or rubbish usually put it everywhere in a, in a new way of economy this is the new the new this is the new deal for the world yes okay. thank you alenka and augusto thank you uh, we can move uh, to the next uh, project on our agenda uh, it's about the role of higher education institution in promoting respectful communication in media literacy um, Valeri, I think that uh, we said that we can play the video that we have on this uh, on the, our website because it's a very very nice video and very informative, um, and it was done by uh, by Spela, okay, with the content contribution of all of the partners, but to really present uh, what we are working. And I don't know if Roberta is with us. She already in the morning session on the dissemination presented the project. It is about uh, using different media in the higher education for different purposes, for the social engagement, that is really important. The, so the third mission of the university, the educational part where we are talking about the, the internal and external communication with our stakeholders. And at the same time, we are talking about how universities promote their study programs and other activities that they're doing. And the, the next dimension is also dimension of the research. So, so how we use the, the research in the, in the media communication. And here we discovered that, especially with the, some cases from the last years, we have a very, very big problem how the, the science could be communicated in the, the, let's say, easy and fair and ethical way to the general public. For example, here is the case of um, COVID that we all went through in the last uh, two years, let's say three years. And you, if you are, we were following the, the TV and so on, we can recognize some, let's say, tensions between the different um, TV houses and so on, or different pharmacy industry. But, um, and now we are facing the similar problem with the war in, uh, in Ukraine. So how the true is communicated. And we have to be aware that maybe we have to check also who is distributing the, the message. 
Uh, Valerie, can you, uh, did you found the video? Okay. This video shows a series of good practices related to the promotion of respectful communication in higher education in Slovenia. Based on small desk research, we realized that at the Slovenian tertiary level of education, several good practices exist on this kind of ethical behavior. In the continuation of the video, five good practices will be presented in more detail. All three public universities, most private universities, and many independent higher education institutions have ethical codes and committees. The Code of Ethics defines the minimum moral standards of higher education teaching and non-teaching staff, researchers and other employees, and students of a higher education institution. In the process of establishment is also the National Council for Ethics and Integrity in Science, whose main aim is preventive action, as well as education in the field of ethics and integrity in science. In addition, it aims to promote good practices and prevent dishonesty. One of the examples of practice in preventing violence is the rules on measures to protect the dignity of employees and students at the University of Ljubljana. The rules aim against violence and harassment. They were adopted in 2012 and supplemented in 2022 by introducing a new trusted person entity to support and assist the victims. Another example of practice in combating hate speech is the project The Linguistic Landscape of Hate Speech in Social Media. The project gathers partners from Slovenia and Belgium and is running from 2019 and 2023. It focuses on building systems that automatically recognize and analyze hate speech in social media. The languages addressed are English, Dutch, Slovene, Croatian and French. An example of a project that promotes critical thinking in youth worth mentioning is the project Developing Critical Thinking Skills for Protecting the Climate, Educational Methods for Teaching Critical Thinking and Media Literacy on Climate Change. The project has been developed by partners from Slovenia, the Czech Republic, Portugal and Hungary. It finishes in 2024. The project's primary goal is to create new methods of promoting critical thinking and media literacy. The methods can be used in a classroom when addressing environmental issues with young people, especially climate change and related media manipulation. The project mainly targets secondary school students and teachers but also applies to higher education environments. The last example of good practice is the initiative Prometheus of Science for Excellence in Communication. The initiative started in 2003. The recognition of excellence is awarded yearly to individuals, groups of citizens or organizations for quality, essential and effective science communication to a specific or general public in Slovenia. Since 2013, the honorary annual title of Science Communicator of the Year has been awarded regularly. Thank you. You saw these five cases from Slovenia and all of the partners uh, prepared some similar, let's say, um, examples or good practices from their countries. Any question on this topic maybe? Someone would like to share maybe the experience from their universities or from their, their society? Nada, yes. Can okay, I add? Awesome. Yes, I studied this problem uh, uh, some years ago in, a, in the field of the e democracy communications. How the democracy can be exported on the web. This is because this is one mechanism of the e democracy. Because uh, a lot of years ago, there was a, the the proportion of uh, the Nobel Prize for Peace to Internet. And this, in the discussion that was opened that time, uh, the, the, the answer was that it was not possible to give the Nobel Prize for Peace to Internet because the Internet is just a media communication system. It's not a person that can receive a Nobel Prize. But how we can use in a fair way 
the system of the communications. If we see, for example, what is happening in this, uh, in this moment, not just from Russia and uh, Ukraine, but also in Iran, in which there is a revolution inside the country and we receive just a part of the information. And this is a very, very uh, unclean, unpite because we don't receive the reality. And in this case, the use of the communication made by internet is uh, not a correct use because also the regime use internet and they send the communication they want, which is not the reality. So uh, this, the, the, the English term for this is the accuracy of the information. But how can we reach the accuracy of the information considering that all the parts, all the stakeholders of internet, they use internet. If they want to show something that is the reality, immediately they, we, we can see another video, another information made by the regime in, that change everything about the position. And we see that when something is happened during the war against Russia and Ukraine, that when, we, when they found uh, something which is absolutely terrible, there is a communication from the, 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 the Ukraine. They said they were the Russians and the Russians say they were the Ukrainians. So we don't reach the reality. And this is one of the worst, one of the biggest problems of the communication, every kind of communication. But these problems are more and more are bigger in the in internet because any communication that we receive, we don't we are we cannot reach the reality just under the communication. We receive a communication from every country during this world, independently on the part they they support. Augusto. What, uh, what is reality? <laughs> there, I, we say that, that uh, from uh, our brands that there are three different reality, my reality, your reality, and the reality. This is the best answer I, I, I found in my life about reality. So there is no one true, everything depends from the perspective. Yes. The point of view is very, very important. <laughs> what, what is wrong for me can be good for you. And my reality is, is different from your reality. And the internet cannot, cannot help us, just information. I, I think that sometimes but the photo can be more close to the reality, but with the, the possibility to change the meaning and, in the photo, also the photo cannot be absolutely the right. The right. But this is a very big problem of idiomatics. Now, uh, when you started this discussion, let's say uh, we were living in Slovenia in the former Yugoslav, no one party system and so on. And because there were no information like internet and so on, we were very happy because we know we know what is true. It was the only, we have only one TV and only one through what was said in the news, you have to believe. But nowadays you are really bombarded with the different, uh, different news, different information and so on. And you as a person has to decide to whom to believe. And I think that uh, the role of educators, and also this is one of the point of this RespectNet project, is to raise awareness among, uh, among young people that uh, they have to make their own decision to whom to believe. No? Of the I, I remember, what? sorry, I remember when I was in Cuba at the beginning of this century, I, I, I saw on the map that there was the Guantanamo prison, the famous uh, Guantanamo prison for uh, the, the terrorists. This is an American prison, which is in, in the territory of Cuba. And when I asked it to the Cuban, do you know Guantanamo? They say, yes, marvelous, beautiful sea, go there. Because for there, for the Cubans is a beautiful sea, for the American is a prison. This is the, the, the different approach to the same information, the same place. Okay. Sorry, Valeri, may I am I just, just wanted to say that definition of the truth, of the knowledge, knowledge basically should be the truth. 
uh, Platon says that it is a true belief. It's a true belief, but it can be justified. It can be verified. And but this the verification is a problem because Cubans can verify the same. So they can verify uh, that Guantanamo is beautiful, and also the, the Americans can verify this. So it, it's a problem. So it's really a problem. Uh, what the truth is, what yes. the, the yes. knowledge is. And we can talk in another way, in another moment, about the influence to the truth from religion, from policy, all the influence and influence of the world. From a religious point of view, I have to believe without understand, which is a cut in the reality. Just believe. And how? who better than the Italians know it? Because, because of the presence of the Vatican in the territory, so we just have to believe something. And, uh, and for the Iranian, it's the same because uh, at the same time, they have to, to, to compare themselves and their reality with, uh, with the religion's problem. And we, you see what is going to happen. It's a different way, a different approach, but it's very, very similar. Uh, let's go to the next uh, topic that we would like to present to uh, to our audience. There are two projects. Maybe I can uh, I can do it both more or less uh, together. So they are professional caregivings of the elderly. So opportunities, training paths, and soft skills required. And there is the skills and qualities for the professions uh, of local community animator, because it's the very similar scheme. And it is about, um, it is about um, the, the both project are run by the, our uh, Polish, uh, Polish uh, colleague. So um, this is a small project, one year and a half, uh, only four partners uh, cooperate in the in the project, um, the one is the, the higher education institution from uh, from um, Poland and three small NGO from um, one from Italy, one from Slovenia, one from uh, from um, uh, Slovakia. Uh, so it was recognized somehow. Uh, so this is local environment animator but when we discussed the topic and the problem it's not the environment it's nothing to do with the environment let's say like we talked before of microplastica but it's a local um, community animator so it's someone who is uh, working in the the society and for the society and the project is um, is not with, connected with the higher education, is in the area of youth. And um, it is said that this, the youth has to have the skills to be developed, how to contribute in the community, how to contribute in the community. And the project is about uh, um, defining, defining 10, um, uh, competencies that are very important for the young people who would like to contribute in the community and it will be developed a course on these 10, um, ten um, competencies for the young uh, people. Let's say uh, the project is at the beginning. Um, as I said, it's Erasmus II project. Um, and let's say if I have this... Um, um, yeah, they are, we also in this project, we try to, to find some of the best uh, practices, um, how this works in, the, in our society. More or less, there are uh, some, uh, let's say, um, examples where the young people are already now engaged in the voluntary work. Here I can say also that in uh, our school, International School for Social and Business Studies, we have a course about how to engage the young population in the community. It is, uh, the title is the um, volunteering and the social responsibility. But because in the last year they were not, let's say, we don't know from which side the interest, but it was not enough interest. We didn't uh, make this uh, course uh, alive. So uh, uh, here, um, 
we didn't uh, finish just, let's say, the first part of the project, but somehow the general competencies that are also in some other, um, let's say, prof professional uh, pro professions um, important alerts are coming out here. This is about the communication, about the digital skills, about team working, about uh, uh, positive approach uh, to the, let's say, to to it to her or uh, himself, and also to the to the other people, uh, to understand the different environment, also the um, the vulnerable groups and the international um, communities. Professional caregivings of the elderly of the elderly opportunities training pass and the soft skills requirements. This is the project where um, school in Celje is involved. Uh, the project is run by the um, by the Polish by the Polish partner and is about the the competencies of the people, uh, either the young one or the middle generation or the elderly one that they are giving to the elderly people. So, so these are caregivers. And because we are becoming, especially in Europe, the, the aging, let's say the aging, uh, the aging community, this uh, profession is becoming more and more important. And in some of the countries is already regulated by the law not only in the houses for the elderly people, but a lot of people are trying to get the, the right, let's say, uh, services at their homes. And um, this is in Slovenia, for example, we have the national professional qualification already in this area. And all the people who has this qualification has also a right to formally work in this um, in this area uh, similar in in the previous project also in this project we are identifying 10 uh, 10 competencies 10 skills competencies that are needed to to do in the right way this uh, profession this job and we are going to develop the the course at the end uh, here the partners are um, also this one is a smaller project is only one year and a half and here we have similar we have countries from Poland, Slovakia, Portugal and Italy in the project. Let's say this uh, this area is becoming in the last year very very important we are discussing this also let's say the, some skills that are important for this uh, for this type of the the profession also with the other countries we tried to apply it with one uh, project last year but it was not successful with the maribor university and we will see how to proceed in the next in the next call okay thank you we can go to the i think the last one valeri no Yes, the last one. So the last one is uh, the title of the last uh, <clears throat> contribution. The last abstract is digital skills for better crisis resilience of small enterprises. Again, it's a it's a, it's a project. Uh, it's a project uh, coordinated by our uh, friends from from Romania, uh, small business from Romania and partners are uh, some businesses from Portugal, small and medium sized, more or less businesses from Portugal, Germany, uh, also Slovenia, of course. Um, so the aim of this project is uh, to increase crisis resilience of micro enterprises. So micro enterprises, that means uh, enterprises up to 10 employees. So very, very, very small businesses. And uh, we would like to increase 
crisis resilience of those enterprises through digital, digital business models. What is a digital model? Bus business model relates to, I don't know, business processes, it relates to relationships with customers, uh, so marketing, so different uh, business and organizational processes are behind business models. And we would like to support all, the, all these processes um, by some uh, digital digital tools, digital resources, um, online resources, online tools, and similar. So in this way, we would like to increase crisis resilience. And everything is based on lessons learned during COVID-19 uh, period. Because during this period, a lot of uh, especially small and medium-sized enterprises suffered a lot of damage. Uh, so the goals of the projects of this project are uh, first to identify the needed, uh, so the important digital skills that small entrepreneurs uh, from micro enterprises need for digital transformation of their business models. So first, we would like to identify digital skills, competences, if you would like another expression. And then in the second step, uh, we are going to develop kind of an online self-evaluation tool. So to make possible for uh, small business, small business owners and also consultants uh, to, 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 let's say, to identify their gaps in digital competences. So we would like to develop uh, some kind of an online tool. And then based on the tool and based on the competency metrics, competency model or skills model, we are going to develop a training course. And this training course will more or less will, will target uh, consultants and also, and also um, entrepreneurs. So, and Beside this training course, we are going to develop, develop also kind of a training kit for consultants to be able to support, to help uh, small en enterprises, uh, small entrepreneurs. And uh, so we already did kind of initial research. So the, the project actually is in the first, uh, so at the very beginning, but we have already done some kind of initial research. So the aim of this research is to identify, classify digital competences that are needed for better crisis resilience of small uh, micro enterprises. And we did this uh, initial research by conducting kind of a task research. Uh, we have also done maybe not in all of the countries focus groups so two focus groups one with entrepreneurs another one with consultants together some uh, qualitative qualitative uh, information uh, about uh, the crisis resilience skills that are needed for uh, better crisis resilience and so on and we additionally, we also conducted kind of a survey, a qualita a quantitative, quantitative survey among consultants. And I'm going to share with you uh, results of this survey because they are quite, quite interesting. So we somehow identified four areas of skills needed for for better crisis resilience and let's say one one area uh, relates to personal mastery uh, another area relates to digitalization the third area relates to management and uh, the last area relates to communication so four areas of skills four areas of of competencies and then we ask consultants. Uh, so we ask them about the level of development of individual 
let's say, skills or, or competencies, and we ask them also about uh, importance. So how important are the skills, the corresponding skills uh, regarding uh, the potential effectiveness or uh, effectiveness of, uh, of a small business. So in, so in this graph, you can see the results of personal mastery. And you can see that the, 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 so the, 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 the best or the, the, the most developed competency within one, two, three, four, five uh, competencies or group of competencies is flexibility, adaptability, creativity. So the, they believe that uh, entrepreneurs in Slovenia, Romania, uh, Germany, Portugal, they, they, they are quite flexible, they are quite adaptable, they are quite creative, and they are also of, of, of an, an opinion that this skill or this competence is very important. The most important skill related to personal mastery. Uh, but on the other hand, they also, they also say crisis resilience and positive thinking uh, is uh, very important, more than others, uh, other skills or group of skills, but it is, it is not so well developed. So th this might be some kind of a direction in which our course should be, should be developed. So we should give more knowledge, more skills about crisis resilience and positive thinking. So this seems to be very important for, for uh, uh, entrepreneurs, but underdeveloped. On the other hand, we have three skills or group of skills having a support network, leadership and learning skills, uh, which are surprisingly uh, evaluated as less, less important but also not so well developed. Uh, so regarding uh, digital, the digitalization, you can see that uh, one, two, three, four group of skills are uh, somehow um, evaluated as uh, very important. General digital skills, IT skills, so the most important skill, uh, then digital communication skills, business digitalization. So this business digitalization more or less means uh, digitalization of business processes, or let's say support to business, uh, digital support to business processes and digital marketing. Uh, but this also said, so the respondents that general digital skills are important, but quite good developed. So they are of opinion that our entrepreneurs have very good IT skills or relatively good IT skills, relatively good general, uh, general digital skills. And they also said that digital communication, they also have good, good knowledge uh, of digital communication. So how to communicate via, via Zoom, via, via uh, MS Teams, uh, how to use uh, digital forums, online forums and similar stuff. But regarding uh, business digitalization and especially digital marketing, they say they lack, uh, lack the knowledge. So the idea is that we develop our, our courses into this direction. So to give a lot of knowledge about digital marketing and also uh, how so knowledge on how to support business processes with with some online tools with some digital tools. Uh, if I go further on management, so regarding management skills, they somehow said that management skills are very important. So controlling, planning, uh, executing, uh, leadership skills, and so on are very important, but also quite good developed and also financial skills. So are a bit uh, less uh, important and uh, not so good developed, but still relatively good developed. Uh, on the other, other uh, hand, they somehow uh, emphasized uh, the, the importance of change management. So change management is important skill, 
but not well developed. So the idea is that we somehow add topics about uh, change management into our future uh, course uh, for entrepreneurs and uh, consultants. Change management means uh, how to deal with changes that are happening all the time. So how to gain gain uh, support from, from uh, peers, from management, how to introduce uh, changes in processes, needed changes in, in the processes into some regulation, into some something, some how to how to let's say install kind of a automatization in in, in the process and similar, similar, similar stuff. So management, and then the last area is uh, about communication. Uh, so our respondent said that customer relations and communication uh, with customers is very important, but relatively good developed. Uh, on the other hand, uh, leadership communication, communication with en uh, employees is somehow uh, uh, so poorly developed, uh, but still the level of importance of such such uh, skills might be quite 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 high so this is another area of uh, for, let's say for our for our courses that should be um, um, taken into a, a account so leadership communication between leaders and and employees and communication uh, among employees of course, supported by some some digital digital technology. So we are now at this stage, and we are going to develop the topics of of the course. Uh, so our idea is to include chapters like overcoming mental barriers, learning to pivot, digital outreach and customer retention skills using digital platforms technical skills for online customer retention, customer relations and communication, digital and green, networking and support, financial skills, working, working on mental balance, and somehow find the right, the right topics. Um, so in our areas of, of expertise, personal mastery, digitalization, management and communication. But th this is the moment we are still brainstorming so what to do, in which direction we should develop our course. So this is very shortly about the project uh, DG and 8. So uh, this is the abbreviation of, of, the, of, of the Erasmus Plus project. Okay, thank you. Valeri, thank you. From your presentation, it seems really to be very, very uh, let's say up to date and needed uh, needed course for the small and business enterprises with the small spots of the knowledge from uh, those four areas that they are uh, they are needed let's say for their operational uh, work no when i was lo looking to the uh, to the graphs no uh, let's say the the skills that are at least from the wording, uh, seems to be a more soft skills, let's say, a general one. Uh, I think that your respondents uh, answered that they are, let's say, more uh, equipped already with this knowledge, no? Yes. But on the, other, on the other hand, those who are more exact or need some technical knowledge, they said no, no. Uh, for example, I saw the legal skills, it was on the, let's say, less developed, one of the less, or let's say, um, preparing the video, okay, yeah. because it's a result at the end, no? So I, I was surprised, I already mentioned today, our, another project, which, which uh, has, or, uh, which, has, which has just finished, uh, uh, DigiVet, so in this project, we tried to support learning processes, with some some digital tools, with some some uh, digital resources like 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 videos, especially videos. 
And we try to, to um, sell the idea of the importance of the video importance as, as, as teaching, teaching material among, uh, among entrepreneurs. But I have to, to admit that we were very unsuccessful. We were unsuccessful. We somehow forced uh, entrepreneurs so that we were somehow uh, our uh, partners in the project um, uh, or beneficiaries of our project. We somehow forced them to, to, to create those videos uh, just to achieve the, the indicators of the project, but otherwise, uh, I think that majority of those videos will never be used as as teaching learning materials inside uh, micro enterprises. Actually, very small small businesses, so they are very re reluctant towards using digital technology as, uh, or videos as as learning resources. But, you know, Valeri, you, you spoke about the change management, and I think that also the society changed in those years, no? The project that you presented before, comparing to the uh, DigiVet, because the DigiVet was written before the COVID. We had the first meeting before the COVID face-to-face, -face, no? Yes. And I think that nowadays, uh, let's say, just to... Um, because uh, making a video on such, let's say, a learning process means that somehow this is a tool how to store the knowledge also, to store the knowledge in the same way for everyone. So everyone has the the the, the same quality of the of the information no? of this trans, let's say, um, uh, trans. Uh, uh, the trans not transforming uh, transferring the knowledge no <laughs> of transferring the knowledge and if you if you see nowadays on the uh, let's say uh, on the websites no uh, on the internet uh, when i bought some of the um, let's say equipment in the house for the kitchen and so on i receive a booklet okay a booklet in many languages Okay, and I didn't I didn't remember where I put it. And when it was the problem, I didn't found the booklet. But now, if you are going to the to the website on this, the company that are selling this, you will find the video. Not anymore the text. So uh, I think that we are moving in this uh, in this direction. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So uh, YouTube is a huge uh, yeah. collection of. of I think I think one of the delivery of this solution can be for medicines, because if you have to read the the, the booklet with, that you have with medicines, you take a lot of time, and you will be more afraid to 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 understand the implication of every of every every medicine. But if you see a video from a smiling smiling girl, which say that you can take it easily without problem, it will be more easy. This is the McDonaldization of the world. It's the, everything is fast. You must receive in an easy way, every information. But what is, I think very, very important, and Nada said it, this is the storage. Because the video, it's easy to understand, easy to, to, to hear, and you have it every moment. Also, if you are in a, in a car, in a bus, you can hear, you can receive this information like a podcast. So this is absolutely in line for the timing of the world in which we are living in, which is a very, very fast world. This is absolutely the new delivery also for, I think for the education because all the university are going to, into the video presentations of the lessons. This is my, my point of view. So uh, the teachers are not needed anymore. <laughs> the teacher have to prepare materials and uh, prepare videos and everything because you know all the university we I saw in the United States Harvard is transferring all the lessons in video uh, and it, this is a very very cha important change I think that the contact with the teacher is is very very important absolutely yeah, yeah. the the um, the the digital world cannot substitute the analogical world in everything. This is absolutely false as an information. But if may I may add something about the presentation you did before about the caregivers, 
I want to just say something about the Italian experience of the caregivers, which is a particular uh, category of people unknown before, but uh, during the COVID, we had the most important category of the world was, were the caregivers because they, they were able to move everywhere. And so also the people that don't have uh, relatives or parents, they try to rent the relatives of others because they want to become caregivers just to, because the, in this way they can move around. <laughs> they ask, <laughs> so can you give me your grandfather and grandmother so can I, I can move everywhere? <laughs> is the most acceptable category of the people during the COVID period. <laughs> so the right, the right to mobility. Yes, yes, there was a way to, the dogs and the, the, the grandparents were the <laughs> <laughs> interesting. Interesting. Okay, yeah. Okay. Okay. I don't know from the participants, we are 22. Maybe someone would like to ask something. If not, I uh, I will I will conclude this uh, session to have let's say uh, a break, a coffee or a tea break. Tea break at five o'clock, and then we are going to continue with the next uh, session. It's the rector. Mm, um, speech, director's speech, and your, let's say, questions and the answers at uh, five o'clock.